Hey FCF, good morning. We're about to take another six day journey, three days in each of two weeks, and we're going to have a subject that's kind of unusual. It's the subject of kissing. Scripture has a lot to say about kisses. And it's a, it's a strange phenomenon to be sure, and we'll talk about through the series the whole phenomenon of kissing, the way it affects both ourselves physically, mentally, emotionally, and so on. All right, now I'm going to start by reading an Old Testament passage, but unfortunately, before I can read the tiny passage that I'm going to read to you, I have to kind of tell you the story. The story surrounds Joseph. Uh, the story starts in Genesis chapter 37, and if you've never read Genesis 37 through 50, please take the time sometime to do it. It's the story of Joseph. He's a remarkable character. Anyway, Joseph, as a young 17-year-old man, is sent out by his father to see what his other sons are doing as far as caring for the flocks. He brings back his dad a bad report on his brothers, and his brothers just hate him. They hate him also because his dad makes him a very special coat, and he was the youngest, and so his dad clearly favored him over the other brothers. So they were very jealous, very hurt, and then angry at him. So they get so angry, they sell him into slavery. And as a 17-year-old boy, Joseph is sold into slavery in Egypt. He's far, far from home in a land where he doesn't speak the language, and he's brought into one difficult set of circumstances after another. I urge you to read the whole story. But through a series of most miraculous events, he literally goes from prison to being the prime minister of Egypt. The Pharaoh calls him in because God had given Joseph some visions about a seven-year famine that was going to occur and a seven-year um, seven year, year, seven years of plenty. And so he advises Pharaoh, the seven years of plenty, you know, let's, let's store up grain because the seven years of famine are coming. So Pharaoh puts him second in charge of Egypt. Now, mind you, the brothers sold Joseph into Egypt when he's 17 years old. We're going to come to the portion of Scripture in Genesis 45 where Joseph now finally is going to reveal himself to his brothers. The brothers were starving in the land of Canaan, so they have to come down to Egypt to get food because that's where the food had been stored, all Joseph's doing. Now, Joseph, by this time, is 39 years old. Uh, he was 17 when they sold him into slavery. He's 39. Plus, he's, he's got the look of an Egyptian. He's, he's shaved. Probably his head was shaved. He's got heavy face makeup. But the main thing is, is he's not a kid anymore. He's a 39-year-old man, and he's a very, very powerful man in Egypt. So, Joseph's been dealing with these brothers as they've come to Egypt to buy food, but he hasn't let them know who he is. And so we're coming to the scene now where he finally discloses himself to his brothers, and that's where I'll just kind of pick up reading. Um, I, I, actually, I'm going to read you one verse first. In, in Genesis 45, 3, it said, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Now, mind you, it's been 22 years since they sold him into slavery, and now they see that he's the most powerful man in Egypt other than Pharaoh. They are terrified. Um, they're assuming he's going to be vengeful. Of course, he, he doesn't. It's a beautiful portion to read if you read the other verses. He says, you know, you guys meant this for evil, but God meant it for good. He sent me ahead so that lives could be saved. So Joseph has no, no bitterness toward him. But they're still... They're still so terrified, they're not able to speak. Now I'm going to pick up reading in verse 14. Then he, the he is Joseph, he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin, and he wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers. And there it is. There's a key. He kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. I think it's kind of a key there. He, it was only after he kissed them that they were no longer so terrified uh, that they couldn't talk to him. But the kiss. So here we have what I'm going to call the kiss of forgiveness. Uh, sometimes we come to situations in life that require physical expression to confirm verbal expression. So Joseph had already told his brothers. He said, you know, guys, don't, don't be afraid. I'm not going to do anything. You did mean it for evil. I mean, he does not let them go completely free. He says, but God meant it for good, but he says, you know, I'm, I'm here now as your brother. It's good. I want to see my father again. I'm here to save life and not to hurt you. But they were still kind of chained up inside, it appears, until he literally, first he weeps, and that helped, but then he kissed them. So here we have a kiss that affirms 
the complete forgiveness that Joseph was extending to them. Now, we get in situations in life where uh, sometimes we have been deeply harmed by someone. And, um, and maybe the injury was serious. Certainly Joseph, his, his first 13 years, so that you just understand, um, he spent most of them in prison, in an Egyptian prison, because of the, the terrible thing that his brothers did. So if anyone had a reason to be bitter, it was Joseph, but he was not. He was not bitter. So perhaps he read their body language. It might have been spontaneous, I don't know. But he sensed perhaps that just telling them everything was okay was not quite sufficient. So the kiss was able to go deeper than sometimes the words. Okay, so, so here's where we can stop and ponder. Now these were his brothers. The, these were relatives. So I'm not suggesting that we go, you know, smooching up with just any old one that we're forgiving. But I wonder if there might be a circumstance in your life, first of all, where you've been deeply wronged, deeply hurt. I mean, forgiveness is not extended when someone has not done anything to us, not done anything wrong to us. It's done when we have been wrong, when we have been hurt, maybe ruined. I mean, Joseph could have thought many a time, my life has been ruined. As a 17-year-old boy, he gets whisked away, you know, and then he spends lots of time in, in bondage in Egypt and as a prisoner. But he extends this forgiveness to them, but then he affirms it by this kiss. And there's something about sometimes in a physical way of affirming something. So maybe there's somebody in your life, first of all, you just need to forgive, and they need to know that you forgive them. All right, that's, that's number one. Maybe the Spirit of God is nudging you in that direction. Number two, maybe it is somebody in your life where it would be appropriate for you to not just verbalize your forgiveness, but to affirm your forgiveness with, with a kiss. It might be a kiss on top of the head. It might be a kiss on the cheek. It might be a kiss on the lips. I mean, it just depends on what the connection is between the two of you. But if, you, if this resonates with you, it could be that that last step, that affirming kiss might be the very thing that melts that other person's heart. As human beings, we all know the power of that. Sometimes we are shocked at how just a, a touch of another hand on our hand or, or another hand on our arm or shoulder, or in this case a kiss, can reach right to the core of our being. It, it will surprise us sometimes how powerfully transforming it can be. So, if someone needs your forgiveness and if someone needs your forgiving kiss, why not take this adventure with Christ and extend it to them? Thank you.